I posted a video here to TikTok, and you know when you use the green screen stuff in the background um, from, let's say, FEMA websites or government websites? It just processes and processes, and it's under review, and it's under review. Um, so I'm going to make it again without using the green screen. Just I have the video saved. I can upload it to my YouTube, but we'll see what happens maybe after October the 8th. Um, so people don't get uptight with all this date setting stuff because I know we got to be careful. I totally get it, you know, and there are baby Christians out there and then there are other Christians who are full of pride um, and it's their way or the highway and I understand we're supposed to take a, a firm stance in the Lord, but what this is on salvation and things that we know for sure, but there are things that the body of Christ in general discuss and need to continue discussing until we can all come together on an agreement, on an accord, as far as the resurrection. We can all agree on the resurrection, right? The Pharisees and Sadducees, they never worked that out, did they? And what happened to them? The Sanhedrin's disbanded, Pharisees, Sadducees gone, temples destroyed, they, they denied their own Messiah. You know what, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm getting at here? The resurrection occurs, so the dead in Christ shall rise first and we who, who are alive at and remain shall be caught up. We can all agree on that. It's the timing of it that some of us disagree on. Now, that shouldn't be a big deal, but to some people, it's a huge deal because what they say, and it's not true, what they say, and we tell them it's not true, yet they continually just to, to beat their chest and say it. They say that the pre-trib rapture believers will cause the falling away, that they're gonna be the falling away, that they're gonna be so scared because the tribulation started and they thought they were gonna escape and they just wanna escape. Like they think we're prissy little wussies or something. We just, no, no, we study the Bible and we understand that that's what it looks like is gonna happen for us because the time of Jacob's trouble is to bring the Jews to accept Jesus Christ. We have already done this. We've already done this. And if also in the time of Jacob's trouble, if the Christians were here, it's like the focus is still on the Christians and it's for the Jews, the time of Jacob's trouble. But I'm starting to understand that a lot of this difference comes from uh, replacement theology. A lot of people who believe in replacement theology. Um, but just think, think about that with the, the, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they couldn't work it out. They couldn't work it out. The resurrection, you know, the Sadducees didn't believe in the resurrection. The Pharisees did. And they never worked it out. Temple destroyed, killed their own Messiah, all that. So l let that be a le learning lesson for us. So check us out. Pope Gregory, um, in 1582, October the 4th, October the 4th from the 14th, um, removes 10 days from the calendar. I, I, sh I show you all the green screen, but you can Google it for yourself. They, it says they, just Google 1582, October 4th to the 14th. What happened in 10 days? Skipped. They skip 10 days, and those 10 days coincidentally are Feast of Tabernacles, and it plays into Shemini Atzeret, Shemini Atzeret, that great and last day, and it plays into um, Deuteronomy 31 at the solemnity of the year of release. Uh, so at the end of every seven, seven years, at the solemnity at the end of the year of release, which means on a Jubilee, Shemini that they're, supposed, they're commanded to do these things. And this is coincidentally when Moses was 120 years old, which Moses was called at 80 years old to set, let my people go so that we may hold a feast, the feast of Passover during the Exodus. Moses was 80, 40 years. 40 is a very significant number. Um, wandering the desert, 40 years, 40 days, 40 nights, 40 days in the desert, Jesus, all this, right? So October the 4th to the 14th, removed from the calendar. The Jews didn't get their tabernacles that year. And it's the same year that they switch from the Julian to the Gregorian. That's why it's called the Gregorian calendar. Pope Gregory, um, who also started the Jesuits, basically started the Jesuits, um, named the new Gregorian calendar, had the honor of, of you know, redoing the months and all this stuff, even though it says the Antichrist will think to change the times and seasons to honor itself. Uh, so that's what happened. They're named after pagan gods, not not. Jesus every month should be Jesus one, Jesus two, Jesus three, Je or Yeshua one, whatever, right? Or Jesus, Yeshua, Jesus. You know what I'm saying? The month should be all named after Jesus, all of them. And Yod or Yod Hey Vav Hey, they're the same. They're the same. But you know what I'm saying? Those were the month should be named after. They're not not after uh, Saturn. Even the days of the week, right? So October fourth to the fourteenth, removed, gone. So. 
we know FEMA has October 4th, coincidentally enough, and now this also corresponds with the blood moon tetrads that have been playing out over the last many years, Passover Tabernacles, Passover Tabernacles. It's called a tetrad. Uh, Passover Tabernacles, Passover Tabernacles. Um, and those have been occurring um, on cue perfectly. And October 8th, again, right? So this October 8th being Shemini Atzeret, that great and last day of tabernacles, um, spoken of in Deuteronomy 31.10. And um, the, Jesus uh, gave many orations and, and sermons on that day, the transfiguration occurs during the Feast of Tabernacles. Many things occur, and it's it just very interesting, right? So the fact that they removed those 10 days, and it was during Tabernacles then. They never got their Tabernacles. The October 4th is this FEMA test. I don't know what it could mean, but it's the same day. And the way it's worded on the FEMA website is weird. It's like... It, uh, it's scheduled for October the 4th. You would think it'd be it's scheduled on October the 4th, but it's, it's something that's scheduled for October the 4th. I guess it's the right way to put it. It just sounds a little ominous. And they've been adding days to this summit, and, uh, you know, it should have been over and done with by now. And they're all they're all just in, in accord and agreement. Look at them. They're doing, they're, they're all in agreement. The whole one world government, new world order. They're, they're all in agreement. Yep. Global warming, uh, pandemics, COVID-19, passports, all this kind of stuff. They're all in agreement. Look at them work together. <sighs> oh, well, all things work together for good for those who love him, right? So I think the reason why we're doing this is growing pains, you know, and we're a big family. So this stuff happens, but we need to, we need to work it out. We need to figure it out. October the 8th being Shemini Atzeret. I'm not saying something's going to happen, but I'm just saying, wouldn't that be awesome if it did? What if God said, watch this, watch me take back my tabernacles. You think you're going to take my feast from me? Watch how I take it back. Watch how it all comes full circle. And it's interesting. It's, it's 1582. Okay. So 2022, the year 2022, we've got to remember, we got to use the Hebrew years. And if our calculations are correct, it is the end of the Shemitah and Jubilee. So 2022 would still be fitting because it's the end of the seven year. It's the end of it. So, and the ingathering, the feasts of the, the, the uh, feast of the ingathering, all the harvests are sowed at different times, but they're reaped simultaneously. Um, also showing a huge parable, uh, a metaphor of God's whole plan plays out in nature as well, right? You know, wheat, corn, uh, wheat, barley, grapes, they're sown at different times and they're ready for harvest. Um, simultaneously at the Feast of the Ingathering is how it's supposed to go. Uh, very interesting, right? And then you look at the harvesting of the wheat and the grapes in the book of the Revelation and October the 8th being Shemini Atzeret, Feast of Tabernacles, 1582, 2022. If you take 20 times 22, it's 440. So 2022 minus 440 years takes you to 1582, which is the year they took 10 days out. They just skipped them. And what's interesting, that's October the 8th, right? If you look at every single watch, and I heard this on the Sword of God channel uh, on YouTube, that every single watch is set to 10.09 and 36 seconds. I've always known it was 10.09 no, because of the, uh, it's supposed to say it looks like it's smiling, not frowning, right? It's smiling, it's a sales tactic. The watch is smiling, you wanna buy it, right? But what if they're saying that's our time? That's our time, the Satanist time, 10.09. Because you can, I even showed digital versions like Apple Watch, 10.09, 10.09, even a digital version. Digital vert 10.09 doesn't look like it's smiling. So it's like 10.09, that's after 10.08. Interesting if that would come to pass, right? I hope so, you know, but if not, that's what we're here for, you know? And to, to help the, 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 the one that Jesus went after, not the 99 in the fold already, focus on the one that Jesus left for. You know, we're in here in the fold already, bickering amongst one another. When Jesus is out there, we'll follow his example, right? And there's so much more that goes into this um, with, with the blood and moon tetrads and the dates and everything that's been playing out in the sun, moon, and stars and the feasts but again you know the the times have been changed so bad that it's hard to know even if we are on track but i know if we work if we all work together we could figure it out because everything we need to know is right there in his word it's right there in his word and his historical context we can figure it out